On the blog, um, there is a link to this really short PowerPoint presentation of some images of Grandma Moses's work. Um, just if you wanted to use that to show your students the images and be able to talk about um, her style and also the different parts of the landscape. So this is available to you um, on a link on the blog for you to use as a tool. And I'll just walk through the slides really quickly in case you wanted to kind of see how um, her style shows up and her use of foreground, middle ground, and background. So in this painting, um, we can see that she likes very busy scenes. She has a lot of people and a lot of groups of people doing different activities. In the foreground, that's going to be the bottom part um, of the painting and the largest things. So the large tables, the big tree that goes up half the painting, the horses, all these things that are close to us near the bottom or the foreground. The middle ground would be these small to medium sized buildings that are kind of in the middle of the painting. And there's some small people in there too. And then the background would be the mountains and the sky and things like that, the things that are very, very far away. So we can see the three parts of a landscape in this painting, as well as her kind of really fun, playful style. In this one, it's not a landscape, it's not outdoors, um, but we still see at least a foreground and a background happening. So we can talk about this and see if the kids see a middle ground or not. Um, can they um, defend that there's a middle ground? Can they defend that there's no middle ground? Um, obviously the foreground is that big white table and all the people close to us. Maybe the middle ground is the second table. And then definitely the background is out beyond the windows, that far away landscape we see through those. And then the last example is this. It really shows her style. She was, um, she lived out in the country. She lived on a farm. And I think it really shows um, her, her culture and her community that she grew up in, as well as a really definite foreground with the street in the front and the busy action, um, a middle ground of fields and fences and some medium-sized things. And then again, a really far away background that goes way back into space with some mountains and trees and things like that. We're gonna start by dividing the paper into three parts so that we can show the students that there is going to be a specific foreground, middle ground, and background. And so you can divide it evenly just to make it simple for the kids to fold that. Um, of course, these can be um, not always equal in other landscape paintings that they do in the future. Once they have that divided, um, have them think of the scene that they're going to be drawing. So think of something really fun, lively, um, something that hopefully has a lot of people and action in it. Um, so have them think of that scene in their mind, then go ahead and look at their paper and think about where things will go from the scene on their paper. Um, what things will be in the foreground and closest to us, what things will be in the middle ground, and then what will be really, really far away. Most likely the people and the action will be in the foreground and there really won't be people in the very far background. They would be probably too small to see. So we need to design our um, layout accordingly. So for my scene, I think I'm gonna do something um, in the mountains, pe people playing in the snow in the mountains, maybe having a snowball fight. So in the front here, I think I will do some really tall trees, like mountain trees here. And of course, this is just really loose drawing. You just get the idea that I am going to start laying out my landscape with some um, plants in my landscape that are really big and in the front. And they even go higher than this first um, rectangle here. They start down here, but of course they're really tall and they even go up into the middle ground area and that's totally okay. I'm also gonna have some people here uh, throwing some snowballs at each other and playing around and maybe there's gonna be a nice big sled there and all sorts of fun. How many people wanna be playing here and maybe that going on in the front. So most of these big things are gonna be down here in this foreground section and they're going to be large. And of course they can go up here into the middle ground section if they're that tall. For the middle ground section, it's going to be things that are smaller than the foreground. They're gonna be slightly further away and thus they appear smaller. So for me, I'm gonna put a little cabin in the woods and I'm gonna put some kids sledding down a hill on the little sled here. Happy, happy. 
and I can do um, some smaller trees in the background. And so things are gonna be looking further away because they're smaller. And I can still have people and things happening here, but it's going to be even happening behind and overlapping with the things in the foreground. And then up in the background, it's going to be very, very far away and thus very, very small. And so my background will be the tops of the mountains and maybe some small trees here. But basically it's just going to be the very last layer of my landscape and could maybe have some small details like a path or a forest, but it really won't have the large complicated scene like we have going on in the rest. So your students will focus on trying to understand and use those three areas of a landscape, making sure that the size um, and overlapping is correct based on which part of the scene they're in. And then once they're done with that, you either use markers or colored pencils to fill in the color.